G'day there guys, I learned from the mistakes of people who take my advice, and on that note, welcome to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. If you enjoy today's content, tell me what you think about it down below in the comments, I love your face, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Posted by user, I don't like this stink, titled, am I the a-hole for period shaming my daughter? I am a 41 male single dad with a 13 year old daughter Lacey. My wife died in childbirth, and it's just been me and Lacey all her life. My sister has been a big help in raising Lacey, and we do keep in contact with her maternal grandparents. The issue started a couple of months ago, when Lacey started her period. I knew this day would come, so I spoke to my sister, my female best friend, and my mother-in-law to be well prepared. I gave her the talk with her grandmother and aunt there. I buy her pads and tampons, I even have a my doll and heating pads ready for Lacey when she needs them. The problem began when I began to notice a smell coming from Lacey's room. I went in to investigate and found pads and tampons openly disposed of in her wastebasket. I checked her bathroom and it was worse. She had her blood-stained undergarments in the tub. I took out her trash and did my best to get rid of the smell, but I didn't know what to do with the underwear in the tub. Later, I noticed blood stains on the couch. It took a while of cleaning, but I got them out, and I figured that was the end of that. It happened again last month when I noticed Lacey's room was stinking again, and I saw she didn't even wash the underwear from before. The bathroom was unbearable at this point. Then, earlier this week, I saw blood stains on the couch again. I set Lacey down and told her that she had to learn to properly dispose of her feminine hygiene products and wash her underwear as the smell was becoming too much, and to be careful of getting blood stains on the couch or anywhere that she sits. I also noticed her sheets had a lot of blood stains and brought this up too. I also let her know that it was okay to get blood on things as long as she washed them and I wouldn't be upset if I saw her blood stained items being washed. Lacey immediately blew up at me saying that periods aren't gross and that I was period shaming and that I needed to educate myself on menstruation. I then got texts from my sister and mother-in-law scolding me for making Lacey feel ashamed of her bodily functions. But I honestly wasn't trying to convey that periods are gross. I was trying to convey that her hygiene needed to be addressed and that the smell was becoming unbearable. I just wanted to make sure that Lacey knew how to properly dispose of pads and tampons without it smelling, and that I wouldn't be annoyed if she washed her blood-stained items. Am I the a-hole here? Was I period shaming my daughter? No. How was you trying to help her and say, hey, you know, it's cool if you bleed, just fix it when the problem comes because, you know, it's natural, it's nothing to be embarrassed about? How is any of this shaming? I guess she felt shame for it happening in a sense, but he wasn't actively shaming her. I'm guessing the two family members blew up at him because the daughter gave them a different version of the story than what the reality was, so I can't particularly blame them for that for not knowing the full story. But regardless, OP just needs to clarify, communicate more, the daughter needs to communicate more, and all should be good, so not the a-hole. Edit. So I've mentioned it in a few comments, I talked to my sister and mother-in-law and explained my side. They apologized for the misunderstanding and, like you guys, have given some good cleaning tips, and they'll talk to Lacey and help her out with the pads and tampons too. Edit 2. So many people here have suggested it, and I've asked Lacey if her period pain is unbearable or just normal cramps, and left the choice to her as to whether or not she wants to see a specialist, but the option is there for her. And edit 3, we have washed the sheets with hydrogen peroxide and purchased some OxyClean for future instances should we need it. Many of you have also suggested period underwear, which again, I have asked her aunt and grandmother about, and they'll be able to give her more information about those, as well as different hygiene products that she can use. Not the a-hole. Periods aren't gross, but getting your period all over the place is. She needs to learn basic period hygiene now, or she will deeply regret it later in life. You're a great father, OP, but maybe consider having her see a therapist or someone more qualified to deal with why she is reacting this way. Thank you for the input. I often feel like I'm not good enough to parent, even though I try to make sure she's surrounded by mother figures. 
Just replying so you hopefully see it, but not every patterned tampon will work the same for the same people. You may need to have a discussion with her, or have someone around you discuss that with her, etc. Also, definitely not the a-hole. You weren't shaming, just trying to help her be clean. Thanks for the info. Especially because there is such a variety, I'm not sure what you might have gotten her, but if you haven't gotten her nighttime pads and only panty liners, that could be part of the reason she seems to leak everywhere. It's a trial and error thing. Just remember to be nice about it because I'm sure she feels awkward, but it seems like you're trying your best, so good job. No a-holes here. You just have a child who needs more education. If she's bleeding so much under the couch and bed, then she either doesn't have menstrual products that work for her, or she isn't changing them often enough. I hope you also taught her about the risk of toxic shock syndrome. But it sounds like she needs some more help learning to deal with this. I suggest you talk to the women in your life, and let them know that she's constantly bleeding through her menstrual products, and ask them if they can help her learn how to better prevent that. Update. Am I the a-hole for period shaming my daughter? It's been a while since my OP, and I remembered the outpouring of advice and support I got from this community. I figured I would give a happy update involving a good smelling house and mending fences with Lacey. In my OP edits, I let everyone know I heeded their advice about cleaning methods and different feminine hygiene products outside of pads and tampons. I let my mother-in-law and sister handle things in that department. They also showed her how to properly dispose of items like pads and tampons and clean bloodstains prior to throwing them in the laundry better than I could. I also spoke to Lacey and asked if she'd like to talk to a therapist, after also scheduling an obgyne visit at her aunt and grandma's urging. Again, a lot of Australians say obgyne, but Americans say OBGYN. So we've scheduled a video visit with both. Waitlists suck. She also had a period some time back and was on top of her hygiene. I didn't smell a thing, and I even saw her doing her laundry. I did, however, want to make sure Lacey didn't think I was trying to shame her and turn everyone else against her. So I sat her down and reiterated that I love her unconditionally and that I wasn't mad at her for the smell and blood stains, and that I noticed that she improved with her hygiene. She appreciated that. Lacey also apologized for getting defensive, and admitted that she was still feeling awkward about her body changing, and how it was really beginning to dawn on her that she didn't have a mother. She's never really spoken about that before, so I got takeout from her favorite restaurants, and we watched her favorite movies, while I told her about the memories my wife and I shared, and how she couldn't wait to be a mother, while we went through photo albums. All in all, we're a happy and clean home again. I hope Lacey will be able to better work through the loss of her mother with a the therapist. Myself and my sister and mother-in-law are around for support in that area too. So things are looking up for both myself and my daughter. I hope this doesn't sound condescending, but as a mother of girls, I am really proud of you. It takes patience, guts, and humility to act the way that you have, following up and showing love and care. You're a good dad. Not condescending at all. Thank you for the kind words. You're setting such a great model, and if she pursues relationships with men as an adult, those guys will have a very high bar to clear to impress her. She knows what a good man is like. I'm so glad it's going well. It can't be easy for Lacey to go through this without her mother, but you are doing a great job. It's good that you seek help when you need it too, so well done. Thank you for the words of encouragement. I'm not a dad, but I just wanted you to know that I hope someday that I'm half the father you are now. You're a good man and a good father. Posted by user, Missing My Girlfriend Like Crazy. Titled, Am I the a-hole for buying my girlfriend a singing bear? My girlfriend and I have been together for about nine months. We started dating right before the pandemic, so she moved in pretty quickly. Living with my girlfriend was amazing. I grew up in a house where everyone was very cold to each other, while my girlfriend is affectionate and takes care of me in ways I never knew possible. She lost her job due to the pandemic and went into being a full-time homemaker. She does all the cooking and cleaning since I pay bills. Before you call me lazy, she doesn't like it when I cook or did chores. And because I make good money, I like to buy her gifts. It's usually something small, 
but it became a daily ritual for me after work to stop at Walnut or the dollar store and buy her a small gift. She loved it. Before I get into why the bear made her so mad, here's context. My girlfriend is black, and the bear I got her had a button that you push to make it sing, and the song was Jungle Love. I thought it was funny, but my girlfriend lost her mind. She accused me of seeing her as these horrible things that I don't want to repeat, and I kept trying to tell her I didn't mean it that way. I love her like crazy, and think she's better than me in every way, and why would I be dating a black woman if I was racist? But she kept insisting I needed to apologize for my casual racism, so I finally just got fed up and said yes, I'm sorry I've brought you so many gifts that I slipped up on one. She ran upstairs crying and called her brother to pick her up. She was at his place for the rest of the day, and thankfully he managed to calm her down, but she refused to come home until I sent her a video of me dropping the bear in the fireplace. I told her I'm fine throwing out the bear, but I'm not going to turn on my fireplace in the middle of summer and record a stupid video. Also, I feel like a bear stuffed with electronic components burning in my living room is a bad idea. I already threw the damn thing in the dumpster, but she insists that if I really loved her, I'd go pull it out of the dumpster and burn it. We argued back and forth for several minutes before she hung up. I texted her brother, asking him to talk some sense into her, and he just texted me back, I ain't gonna defend your idiot ass anymore, just take the L and get lost already. I tried to call him, but he blocked me, so now I'm wondering if I should have just burnt the stupid bear to make my girlfriend happy. It's still sitting in the dumpster outside, it's not like it's too late, but how would I send her a video if she blocked me? It's killing me how much I miss her. If I knew she'd react this badly, I never would have gotten the bear. I tried apologizing, but that wasn't good enough. She wanted me to perform some weird ritual instead. Now I wish I'd just done the weird ritual, but I'm still not sure I deserved this kind of reaction for buying her a bear that sings. I understand I could have handled the fallout better, but am I really the a-hole for buying my girlfriend a singing bear? I looked up the history of Jungle Love and then everything that accuses it of racism, and I've got to say there are very strong arguments saying that it was racist in undertones. I didn't even know that Jungle Love was a song before now, so I can't really give a judgment on this one because I don't actually know myself. I'm going to say based on her reaction and OP's unwillingness to just burn the damn bear, like it's not that hard. You can just burn the bear and, you know, apologize and not repeat these racist actions again. Why were you so unwilling to do that? That puts you in a-hole territory to me. It's clear that you deeply offended her, and now you've also offended her family, i.e. her brother. I don't know where you go from here, OP, but you're definitely the a-hole. Yeah, man. This is straight casual racism. It's dehumanizing because those tropes of jungle fever and jungle love literally equate black people to apes and other animals. Instead of realizing this, you doubled down and didn't even apologize. You're the a-hole. Is it weird to anyone else that this guy also told her that she's better than me in every way? Also, your apology sucked, dude. The part that makes me think that there's a bit more to the fact is that the brother blocked him? I don't mean a big, huge iceberg under the water. I was just wondering how obnoxious OP was being that this guy originally defended him and then decided F it and blocked him. Heads up for the future. Sarcastic apologies are a really, really, really bad idea. It shows contempt for the other person, and you're basically sneering at her attempts to explain. The fact that you apparently sincerely consider this to be an apology, well, also, dude, Racists have been sleeping with people they consider subhuman for all of history. It's like saying you can't be a misogynist because you're dating a woman. You also need to learn that it's not whether you are racist, but whether the thing you said or did is racist. Everyone Fs up sometimes. By not listening to her, you made this a huge, quite possibly relationship-ending argument instead of a learning moment. Not because you bought a bear but because you refused to listen to her and dismissed her with a deeply insulting apology, wherein you basically called her ungrateful. Updates. Am I the a-hole for buying my girlfriend a singing bear? Well, I just came here to tell you guys that I set things right with my girlfriend and burned this stupid bear like she wanted me to. 
I sent the video to some mutual friends, who then sent it to her, so she unblocked me and called me. I told her how much I love her, and that I'll do whatever it takes to get her to come home. I also told her I'm going to be a better listener when it comes to racial issues, and I've made a lot of progress in that regard. After we talked on the phone, she told me to come pick her up. I stopped at Starbucks to get her her favourite drink and a cake pop on the way. She loves those things. And when I brought them to her, she threw her arms around me and said, This kind of stuff is why you'll always be my favourite douchebag white boy. So that was nice. Anyhow, I've basically been groveling and spoiling the hell out of her for the past month. She still won't let me cook or do chores, so I watched some tutorials on giving massages and started doing that every night when I get home from work. Her daily gifts are also more thoughtful than normal. And last weekend, I converted the attic into a library for her, something she's always wanted but I originally said no because I used the attic for storage. So I had to do quite a bit of finagling, but I made it work because she's worth the trouble. So now she has a cozy spot to read her books. I'm still waiting on the beanbag chairs to come in, but it's almost finished. I just want to say thanks to the people who pointed out how dense I was being. My girlfriend is the love of my life, I want to marry her and have kids with her, and I'm glad that the internet was here to tell me to stop being a stubborn idiot and to start being more understanding of her perspective. Thanks for kicking me in the ass, Reddit. I may not deserve my girlfriend, but I did deserve to be called an a-hole. I'm gonna be better from now on. Dude, I'm proud of you. Instead of saying, screw all of y'all, to us, you thought, learned, and fixed it. You swallowed pride, something every human has no matter how little, and admitted that you messed up. Not many people can do it as well as you had. What's most impressive is you chose to put love over pride. It takes a big man to admit when he's wrong, take responsibility, and make amends. Tips hat to ya. Honestly, the library thing was the best post of the post. I don't understand the need to buy her something every day, but taking a part of your home and making it hers is so kind and heartfelt. Doing things like this is so much better than a store-bought item any day. Unlearning casual racism is a lifelong journey, and we all F up from time to time. I'm glad you're willing to keep learning, man. And good job, OP. And your girlfriend is a gracious woman. You sound like you'd like to give and do a lot, and that is wonderful. Your post is a lot about what you've done for her, and a lot less about how she's responded. Maybe that's because of privacy, but just don't forget while you're in the sling of doing lots of generous things, to take the time to devote attention and consideration to what she thinks and how she feels. Yeah. Everything about OP's way of relating to his girlfriend strikes me as weird. It's like children playing house. They've been together for only nine months. She moved in after only three. She's now a full-time homemaker while he pays the bills. He remodels his house for her and buys her a gift every day. But he only talks about what he does for her. And his first reaction when she tells him he's being racist is to mention how many gifts he's given her. This looks a lot like love bombing and I'd be willing to bet it's going to spectacularly crash and burn. Okay, and I think that's where we're going to end today's episode, guys. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even learned something from these stories. Just want to say a quick shout out to my Patreon subscribers and my channel members. You guys should be on the screen right now. If you do see yourself, I want you to give yourself a little pat on the back for being amazing, and supporting me on this channel, this uh, little journey we're going on on the YouTubes. I really appreciate it, and you guys enable me to do all this amazing work. So if uh, you do see yourself, I love your face, and I'm happy to see you. Also guys, if you want to pitch in your own support, you don't have to, but channel links are down in the description below to support the Patreon, the channel membership, whatever you want to do. It's kind of like tipping me if you feel like I'm doing a good job on this channel. I will be opening up avenues for content on those in the future. Just right now I'm kind of bogged down and stuck in Ireland, but you know. It is what it is. Anyway guys, with that said, I do hope you have a wonderful day today. Whatever you're up to, I'd love to know down in the comments below. I do hope you have a good day, night, sleep. Whatever you're up to today, tell me, and I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Bye.